children! Welcome back here to the channel Stapa Olho Azul and Super Académico. And I am very pleased to say that uh, in a way that I really don't understand, you, the audience, are enjoying the, the playlist about this book, New Rules of Sociological Methods, from, by Anthony Giddens. Woohoo! It's strange because uh, the proposal of these channels in the English version is more like to entertain, but this this playlist is being very very welcome, uh, very well received. So uh, let's continue with this with this playlist with this the analysis of the reading and comments of this book. And before I begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channels subscribe to the channels, both channels, Tapa Olho Azul and Super Académico, ring the bell for notifications and comments and share, take a look at the description below to see what else we can offer you as contacts. So, um, in the last chapter, né, the, the first chapter, we, we saw some, some new ideas, né, some ideas that are taken from the philosophy, from the anthropology, to help sociology to develop, to better develop uh, its methods, its method. And Anthony Giddens is uh, is trying to to show that uh, the sociology to keep growing and contributing to the society with theories né, about the, the social problems of today, né, of today problems it uh, need to uh, to embrace this kind of a new uh, ways né? to to see life to see the human being to see the experience of living and using language using the the, the perception of everyone involved so uh, I, I, as i was reading i'm still reading the book i didn't, haven't finished yet I was thinking that uh, the, the book seems to be a, a, some kind of a second opinion, eh? a countermeasure, eh? a position in a way of the, the classical book uh, Rules of Sociological Method, the uh, Rules of Sociological Method by uh, one of the fathers of sociology, uh, Emil Durkheim. Emil Durkheim that wrote the book that established the to study society you have to establish the social facts the social facts that it's that is being analyzed uh, to establish the social facts you need to have uh, you need uh, the the facts that it's uh, uh, reproducible facts in any society it need to be uh, cohesive uh, it means that uh, the, the fact uh, imposes itself, uh, impose, impose itself. The fact imposes itself in the in the life of the individuals, and it's possible to uh, isolate the facts in a way that you can formulate as a problem, like the the way we dress, the fashion, the fashion, uh, the fashion or crime. Uh, that's something that there is in every society and uh, it imposes itself, uh, itself to every individual and you can isolate to analyze so uh, in, in this way Giddens presents some problems about the simplification of this way to look at social problems so the second uh, chapter it's called agency act identifications and communica communicative intents here so you can see what i mean sorry the position of this thing in the camera is hard because it go goes opposite way to it where towards where i point so i'm pointing left it goes right in my view in my point of view so 
Uh, so he tries to, he begins saying that British and American philosophers are strongly influenced by the later work of Wittgenstein, Ludwig, Ludwig Wittgenstein, with the, uh, his language, see, it is a philosophy of language, language philosophy. The problems of agency. Agency is a way to uh, point the, the, the one, uh, the individual, the person that is acting at the moment. So uh, agency is like that. The first highlight that I made is I shall define action or agency as the stream of actual or contemplate casual interventions of corporeal, corporeal <laughs> beings in the ongoing process of events in the world. So I, he will define action or agency, as I said, as the stream, stream and the continued, the continued transmission of actual or contemplate casual interventions of people, uh, people with bodies, corporal beings, in the ongoing process, uh, the continuous process, of events in the world. So uh, uh, try to establish the way that the the action, uh, the, the way that we act in society is continuous, uh, is non-stop. Uh, it's always is, always there is, always there is an action of us uh, as people in society, ongoing process of events in the world, events in the world. Intention and projects. So we all have intentions in our projects and in our actions. Intentional acts characteristically bring about bring about whole series of consequences, which are quite legitimately to be regarded as doings of the actors, but were not actually intended by them. So, what can we interpret with that? Yeah, intentional acts bring about a whole series of consequences. Everything that we do has a consequence, which are quite to be in a legitimately way, legitimately, legitimately, <laughs> legitimately, to be regarded as doing doings of actors, uh, something that actors do, we as actors in society do, but we're not actually intended to intended by them. So we have the responsibility of acting, but we don't have the 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 main intention of doing so, as he's saying. But the problem is that in that the, the, the whole responsibility, uh, the whole account, uh, accountability of this of the way this way of acting uh, resides in whom? Uh, who is to be responsible for that if not the one that acts? So that's the question. That's the question about this problem that he's saying. Eh? Uh, that's why it's agency, act identifications, uh, the, the way to allow the other to act, the, the identification of who acts, and the communication of the intents. The identification of acts. The intelligibility intelligibility of nature and natural events nature and natural events is accomplished by construction and sustaining of frames of meaning from which the interpretative schemes whereby everyday experience is assimilated and handled are derived are derived. So everything that happens, it's we interpret everything that happens in a way that we uh, assimilate 
that as part of the meaning of the meaning process that is a interpretative schemes so these interpretative schemes we work in the last chapter some is something about interpretative philosophy né? hermeneutics it's the, the the line of thought that says that everything that we, we do we do everything that happens everything that we are surrounded has the possibility of uh, establishment of a meaning by us we establish a meaning or learn a meaning uh, um, about what happens because we are able to establish this interpretation so uh, yeah, everything that's uh, that uh, that's possible to be interpreted is derived by this action of establishing a meaning yeah? frames of meaning the understanding of descriptions the understanding of descriptions generated within divergent frames of meaning so different divergence divergent their mediation in regard to the natural world is already an hermeneutic problem so when we interpret the in a diver, divergent way in a different way uh, it established a problem of, of hermeneutics a problem of interpretation in that regarding to the natural world that's the natural world is supposed to be something that is absolute that's universal for everyone so when i look at a tree i see something i interpret it some way other person can see interpret the tree in a different way now the conceptual schemes of the social sciences therefore express a double hermeneutic it's I, I it's obvious for me why relating both to entering and grasping the frames of meaning involved in the production of social life by lay actors again lay actors and to reconstituting reconstituting these within the new frames of meaning evolved involved in the techno conceptual schemes so of course there is a, a double hermeneutic uh, the hermeneutic of the one that's doing the, the interpretation formally uh, the, the the scientists and the, the interpretation of the, the the lay lay actor the person the, the common person that is just doing something in their lives their lives okay so that's why it's double hermeneutic this relation of reciprocity between common sense and technical theory theory is a peculiar but eminently interesting feature of social investigation uh, the problem is that Giddens is establishing or try to establish a way of oppose the the classical method by by Emil Durkheim by saying uh, you cannot isolate the social facts in a way that uh, you as a social scientist can look at the social facts in a in a uh, in a not involved way in a, in a pure way okay in a not biased ways it's always always bias always bias individuals the individuals reasons or motives for what he or she does certainly have to involve deciding what he or she was intending to do so everything that we do is motivates by some kind of intention even when we don't understand we don't know the intention clearly i don't know the video is already 15 minutes i think i will stop here because he's going to begin another another topic i think i won't be able to finish the chapter in one video only i want i don't want to 
to put you to sleep as you the enter so next time we continue with the rationalization of action that was something that we do i i think sometimes reading this book reading these parts for you and commenting that uh giddens né? tony giddens anthony giddens is trying to to make uh, a scientific theory and a scientific understanding of the common life of the common sense in a way that helps sociology to keep keeping being helps sociology to keep being uh, relevant relevant because uh, when we see the classical theories uh, the, the big meta theories from the classical sociologists uh, Max Weber Karl Marx, Emilio Heim, uh, Wilfredo Pareto, and, um, and Talcott Parsons, Talcott Parsons, and who else? Who else in sociology? Uh, Anthony Giddens himself. But this, all this, uh, 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 Pierre Bourdieu, Pierre Bourdieu also. Uh, all these this big names of sociology they have they, ha they, they, they had contributed to, to the social theory uh, uh, through these two centuries and eh? 20, uh, 19th and 20th century and by, by this time uh, when we reach the 21st century it's hard to find new formulations of theories that are not derived from these big theories and these great classical theories so i think it's, uh, it's a way that make socio sociology relevant still and uh, still relevant this day by introducing this kind of uh, uh, embracing these methods that can can value the 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 small problems, the problems of the the the, the, the one, the individual, the, the person, and there's also the uh, Georg Zimo, Georg Zimo, Norbert Elias also. They are uh, sociologists that contribute with this kind of a uh, new thinking in a way because they 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 want to to make a big theory about big problems in society, but the the small problems that develop small theories in a way well i'm just speaking my mind so i hope you enjoyed this video this this fifth video of this playlist and don't forget to share the video for and uh, to, to friends that and may enjoy this this topic this subject and don't forget to subscribe if you are not yet subscribed to the both channels tafolia azul and super academico and we see you next time. Bye.